with an investment of 150 billion. Another century project in China comparable to the Beijing and Hangzhou Grand Canal is about to be completed. It made Western countries jealous. Let's take a closer look in this video. Good news, another century project in China is about to be completed. After the completion of the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal, its significance can be compared with that of the Beijing and Hangzhou Grand Canal. The canal cost nearly 150 billion and took more than 10 years. What kind of development process has such a huge shipping project experienced? Why is it necessary for China to cultivate? From ancient times to the present, economic development has always been affected by natural factors. In ancient China, there were stories such as Pangu opening up the world and Dayu controlling the floods. In order to survive and develop better, human beings give full play to their subjective initiative. Also, in order to improve the traffic conditions in various parts of the country, the rise of China's infrastructure has shocked the world. The construction of the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal is a manifestation of the Chinese state's vigorous support for the development of the shipping industry. The completion of this canal will stimulate the development of China's shipping industry. Some experts said that the completion and use of this canal will promote China's economy to a new level. As we all know, water transport is famous for its low cost and large capacity. From the perspective of global freight data, shipping accounts for a large proportion, and so does China. Although China has a well-developed train and high-speed rail network, the transportation of many bulk goods still relies on shipping. China's shipping industry is concentrated in the south of China, where the water system is developed, mainly in the Yangtze River and the Pearl River. However, the two major water systems are not directly connected, and it takes time and time to complete the transportation. To a large extent, this has become the biggest obstacle to the shipping industry of the two major water systems, so the development of the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal has been put on the agenda. In January 2021, the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal project was officially proposed, which means that the project of this century will start. In fact, this canal project was proposed hundreds of years ago in the Ming Dynasty. At that time, the idea was only for farmers to irrigate their farmland. After that, Mr. Sun Yat-sen also mentioned the construction of the canal, but in the end it was nothing. After the founding of New China, with the joint efforts of Jiangxi and Guangdong provinces, a recommended route for the canal was proposed. Discussions and surveys have also been carried out many times, but no work has been started. Until 2016, relevant special research work was restarted, and the channel planning of the canal was also carried out in an orderly manner. You know, Jiangxi province was known as the land of fish and rice in ancient times, which shows how prosperous it is. Regardless of industry or agriculture, the development strength of Jiangxi province in ancient times cannot be underestimated. But in modern times, because Jiangxi province did not have the right to pass the Guangdong to Han Railway, Hunan province overtook it in economic development. The development of the Beijing to Guangzhou high-speed railway has also successfully avoided Jiangxi province resulting in the inability of Jiangxi province's rapid economic development. The traffic difficulties in Jiangxi province have affected the development of Jiangxi, but the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal has brought hope for the future development of Jiangxi province. In southern China, there are many examples of urban economic development driven by the development of water transportation. 
For example, the construction of the Beijing and Hangzhou Grand Canal has driven the economic development of Hangzhou, which will not be shaken for hundreds of years. The two cities of Wuhan and Chongqing are because they have become important water transportation fortresses. The convenient transportation attracts the exchange of goods, which stimulates the prosperity of the city and the growth of the economy. The development of history proves that the construction of the canal is the most beneficial project to promote the economic development of the surrounding area. With the rapid development of China's economy, the existing canals can no longer satisfy the rising China. And the southern section of the Beijing and Hangzhou Grand Canal, which has been in operation for hundreds of years, often encounters traffic jams. The opening of the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal is like sending charcoal in the snow. It can not only solve the congestion caused by heavy traffic, but also promote the increase of China's trade volume to a large extent. The pros really outweigh the cons. We all know that China is expected to achieve the goal of carbon peaking by 2030. Compared with air transport, railway, and road transport, water transport has the lowest transport cost, and water transport is energy-saving and environmentally friendly. Therefore, the opening of the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal has important environmental significance. The Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal is 1,301 kilometers long. It is better than the Beijing and Hangzhou Grand Canal in that it is a natural water canal, and there are very few channels that need to be excavated manually, only two to three hundred kilometers. The other input is the consumption of some reservoirs and hydropower stations along the way. This canal can be regarded as a very cost-effective canal, and the manpower, material resources. And financial resources invested are not large, but in the process of excavating new river channels, Chinese engineers encountered many difficulties. For example, in the process of connecting Taojiang, Jiangxi, and Zhenjiang, Guangdong, three problems were encountered. The first of these two places are in the mountains. The second is that the water flow in these two areas is not large, and most of them are short and shallow rivers, which will prevent large ships from passing here. If you want ships to pass safely, the river must be widened and the depth of the river must be further deepened. The third is to talk about the ecological problems here. These two areas are located in mountainous areas. With serious soil erosion and the local ecological environment is very fragile. If the river course is widened and deepened here, the local ecological environment will be seriously damaged. Faced with these problems, the engineers conducted several on-site inspections and research discussions, and finally decided to choose a relatively gentle location with a moderate amount of work for excavation. So where will the Grand Canal pass through? The full name of the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal is the Zhujiang Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal. As the name suggests, it will pass through Zhujiang, Jiangxi, and Guangdong. The total length of this canal is about 1,988 kilometers, and it mainly consists of two parts. The Zhujiang and Jiangxi Canal of about 760 kilometers, and the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal of about 1,228 kilometers. The canals in Jiangxi actually account for about 1,168 kilometers of the total length. It can be seen that Jiangxi is the most important province that this canal passes through. Although Jiangxi has always been run through by many major railways and rivers, it has always been difficult to develop its economy. A big reason is that Poyang Lake is located here. Floods frequently occur in the Yangtze River, and a heavy rain can bring huge economic losses to the areas along Poyang Lake. 
An important reason is that the surrounding area of Poyang Lake is a flood plain, and a rise in the water level of a few meters will submerge a large amount of surrounding land. And since only the Yangtze River can discharge water, it is difficult to discharge floods during the wet season. The construction of the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal will provide a new flood discharge channel for Poyang Lake. And Poyang Lake can be built into an important material distribution center connecting the Beijing and Hangzhou Canal, the Yangtze River system and the Pearl River system, driving the overall economic development of Jiangxi and making it magical. After the canal is completed, it will connect China's three major economic sectors and form a new pattern of inland water transport. It will also become one of the most valuable projects in the history of the canal, which also shows Jiangxi's important position in the north-south water transport. After the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal is completed, its significance can be compared with that of the Beijing and Hangzhou Grand Canal. Through this canal, China's water transport and logistics will realize mutual exchange, and it will be able to connect to the rivers and seas in the north and reach the rivers and seas in the south. After the opening of this canal, Jiangxi and Guangdong changed from the original land transportation to water transportation, and the freight distance from Guangzhou to Shanghai was shorter than the original distance. After the canal is completed, it can effectively share the pressure of road transportation. At the same time, water transportation not only has a large carrying capacity, but also has cheaper freight, so it can also reduce costs, which is very conducive to the development of China's manufacturing industry. This canal not only connects the Yangtze River Delta and the Pearl River Delta, but can even be directly connected with the Beijing and Hangzhou Grand Canal, thus directly affecting the entire water transportation system of China. What is more noteworthy is that after the successful construction of the canal, China will directly usher in the canal era and become a new driving force for domestic economic growth. Although many people are not optimistic about this canal project, just as these people looked down on the Three Gorges project back then, now the Three Gorges Dam has become a project that will benefit the present and future, and we believe the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal is the same. Once the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal is completed and put into use, it will surely welcome the envy and praise of Western countries. China's infrastructure strength has already become famous at home and abroad. Today, with the development of globalization, China's economic level is developing rapidly, and the completion of the Jiangxi and Guangdong Grand Canal will become a highlight in the history of Chinese water transportation engineering. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.